Previously. 911, what's your emergency? I just saw a murder, 236 South Holler. Please send somebody. Almost three months into lockdown. We received a copy of your COVID-19 test. You tested positive. You need a job or you're going back to jail. I'm the only witness to a crime that was supposed to stay under the rug. The only loose end. I'm to be silenced. Stop it before it has consequences for you. You understand? My computer crashed. Now my phone is my only conduit to the world outside my apartment. And standing right in front of my door, the killer. Hey, listen, Bonnie has to break up with Clyde. I'm sorry. Not sure I understand. The phone thing, we have to leave it be. I shouldn't have even involved you. Something spooked you? No, it was just a bad idea from the start. Human emotions aren't my expertise, but I do have a bullshit radar. It's malfunctioning. I'll check the wiring, but usually it's pretty accurate. When this pandemic is over, I'll buy you several rounds for your trouble, okay? Let's leave it at that. Perfect pleasures don't mean much to me. Yeah, yeah. We'll get you shit-faced in no time. Midnight. Tossing and turning. The killer bugged my phone. He can hear what I say. I'm sick to my stomach. I walk over to the couch, look across the street. Rosalie has friends over. It's loud and raucous. They listen to music, drink, talk. Laughter echoes through the neighborhood. I'm left alone with my thoughts again. He bugged my phone. He's dangerous. Shivers down my spine. Listen to your sister. That's what he texted me. It plays over and over in my head. Rachel had told me to stop looking for him, focus on getting a job. My probation is on the line. My freedom. The killer could listen to my phone calls. How? For how long? Was I in physical danger? That's a dumb fucking question. Was Rachel? I couldn't even contemplate that. I sacrificed my freedom for her to keep her safe a long time ago when she was dating that square-jawed prick Ryan. And Ryan hit her, and I, well, the point is I didn't keep her safe this time. On the contrary, brought the killer straight to her door, because if he knows who she is, he also knows where to find her. What would Liam Neeson have done? Basically the opposite. So, okay, I call Hilton and pretend to stop. I'll have to call Rachel and pretend to stop too. At least it'll buy me time. They're dancing now at Rosalie's place blowing off steam after three months of lockdown. Right after the killer left tonight, I saw him through the window strut up to his parallel parked Lincoln town car. I took a pic of the license plate. I knew Hilton could look up who it was registered to. I need to call him and tell him what's going on. But my phone is bugged. The killer can hear me. It still makes me sick. I need a new phone. I think of the night Rachel called me, barricaded in the bathroom, Ryan ranting and raving behind the door. I could hear it over the phone. I think of my drive over there, gripping the steering wheel, thinking this might change everything. And it did. Ryan red-faced at the door, rage personified, but the impotent rage of arrested development. The knife on the kitchen counter. A bottle breaks at Rosalie's, laughter and howling. Someone shouts for them to shut up. I need a new phone. He bugged it. Call Hilton, call Rachel. I can order a prepaid phone on Instacart. My bank account is overdrawn, my credit card maxed out. The killer bugged my phone. I need to stop. This is a sign. I need to let this go. It's dangerous now. He's coming after me. He's coming after Rachel. She was in the bathroom. Ryan huffing rage, wheezing violence, blocking the door, yelling. I was scared. I'm scared now. A hammer in the air. Roger looks at me. Cops outside now, like the morning I called them. Inside Rosalie's apartment now. Noise complaint. They take this serious, unlike a murder. He bugged my phone. I had to stop. I can't stop. Ryan looked at the knife. I grabbed it first, held it out. He let us go. It's quiet now. 3 a.m. The cops are gone. Rosalie went to bed. The killer bugged my phone. He's dangerous. I grabbed the knife. I need to stop. Rachel's right. Rachel was safe. Rachel, she's in danger now because of me. I need a new phone. I need to stop. I have the license plate. Stop. Keep her safe. Stop. 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 When I wake up, it's bright day outside. Hello? Hello there. May I please speak with Saskia Butler? Y- yeah, speaking. Well, good morning, Miss Butler. My name is Sharon, and I am calling about your application as a Pizza Hut delivery driver. Oh, yeah, great. Get your head in the game. Wake the fuck up. If you want to go back to normal, you need Bjorn back on your side. So get this fucking job. Why don't you start by telling me a little bit about your background? First time I talked to someone on the phone knowing the killer can hear us. Yeah, um... I worked as a line cook until recently, so I'm familiar with the industry. It's making me paranoid, claustrophobic. That's fantastic. 
I'm also used to the hours. I can work whenever, really. I peek through the blinds. No one on the street. Do you have your own vehicle? Yes. I look through the people. No one in the hallway. Keep it together. Focus. Why do you want to be a pizza hut delivery driver? I look around. If he bugged my phone, what else did he bug? My Bluetooth speaker? It's Wi-Fi enabled. I'm sure he could hack it. Well, I was recently let go from the restaurant, so I need a source of income. Oh, sure. I understand. And I am so glad Pizza Hut is able to offer opportunities for people. What about my smart TV? Or my electric toothbrush? It has Bluetooth. Could he hack into it and turn it into a microphone? Use your brain. That's fucking nonsense. I love to meet new people and make them happy. That's definitely the job for that. The neighbor's dog's barking. I look through the people, no one there. Fuck. Get your head in the game. Focus. Uh, how are you with math? You'll be asked to make change on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. The killer knows who I am, where I live, can hear my phone calls. I'm trapped. And where do you see yourself in five years? I can't do this. I have to break free. With a lot of hard work and dedication, I would think I could manage a store by then. I think I have the right profile. I love that answer, Miss Butler. I really do. I'm not gonna stop. I know it's the smart thing to do, but the killer has colonized my mind. I can't think of anything else. I need to exercise him. Only way to do that is to bring him to justice. He killed Roger, threatened me, brought Rachel into it. <sighs> no, he has to go down. All I need is a phone and I'm off to the races. But I need money and the only person I can ask is Rachel. She has been my rock ever since the moment the cops arrested me. I thought they had come that day to take my witness statement. Instead, blam, cuffs on my wrists. Rachel paid for my lawyer, came to visit me in prison every other day, took care of me the first days I got out. My emotional anchor, the only person I trust, the only person that matters to me. I never told her that. I'm not good with emotions and whatnot. I push people away when I need them most because being vulnerable scares the shit out of me. Now, for the first time in my life, I want to be vulnerable. Tell Rachel everything she's aching to hear. But with the killer listening in, this sniveling rodent prying for his own personal entertainment, no fucking way. He would see it as a weakness, would use it against me. It makes me nauseous just to think about. So even though I want to be honest, tell Rachel how I feel for once, all I can do is pretend, lie to her, push her away again. The killer will have to fucking pay for that. Hello? Hey, Rachel. What's the good word? The word is, I'm very centered. I just did the raisin exercise. Okay. I'm just calling to say you were right. The whole murder thing was crazy. Put me in a straitjacket. I never said you're crazy. Well, I am in a straitjacket nonetheless, and I locked myself into the rubber room. Don't ask me how. So, you don't need to worry anymore. It's over. The murder never happened. I never saw anything. Peachy, anything else? I'm... Trying to apologize. No, you're not. I know your sarcasm hides your real feelings. Sometimes you need to just show your real feelings. Sometimes, like now. I didn't mean what I said. I think it was the first time you were honest with me. No. Do you resent me? No. You think I made it easy for myself. I should have picked up the knife. Stop. You sacrificed everything. All you have left now is bitterness. That's not true. Then tell me what is true. I can't. Why not? I need your help. That's the truth. What? Your credit card number. I need your credit card number. You know the worst part? I'll give it to you. Of course, I can't help it. They'll repo my car. I interviewed for a job today and I need a car for it. No need to explain. I don't want to do this on the phone. When quarantine is over... Don't bother. I understand now. I know my role in your life. You don't understand. I need your CC. It's an emergency, but I have things I want to say. In person. I'll text you pictures of my card. If you need anything else, just ask. I'll always help. I think I got that job. I'm doing my best. I have to go. We'll talk some other time. Rachel! I feel like a ladybug on its back. The killer like a little boy poking at me with his finger, amused at my helplessness. I guess the good news is, I really did get the job. As soon as my quarantine is over, I'll deliver delicious pizzas. Yay me. Who is this? 
That's not a nice way to answer the phone. Southgate? Yeah. This is not your number. Astutely observed, Columbo. What happened to your number? Compromised. The killer, guy with the prepaid phone, he bugged it. As in, can listen to your conversations. My bullshit radar wasn't malfunctioning then. I got a prepaid of my own now. Knock on wood, he can't listen to this. Are you in physical danger? Let's put it this way. My murder inquiry brought all the boys to the yard. We need to get to the killer before he gets to me. Define get to him. Once we know who he is, we'll figure it out. Can you look up license plates? Please don't assault my intelligence. Is that a yes? I have his license plate. The fact you would even ask! Okay, drama queen. Here's the number. What was that? Not sure. Who is it? Bjorn, rise check in, open up. Shit, I I need to call you back. If you're in danger, tell me right now. I don't think so, I'll call you right back. Come on, open up. I can't let you inside, you'll get infected. I have something for you. I'm stepping six feet away, mask up and open the door. Hey Bjorn, sick of dealing with the mute button? The plastic bag in front of you contains a drug test. You are required to take the test right now. You have two minutes to complete it. If you take more than two minutes, you will be considered to have failed the test. I don't understand. Do you need me to repeat anything I just said? No, it's just, why now? Random test. Normal part of your probation. Did someone ask you to do this? What? I got a job. Pizza delivery. You have two minutes. You don't care? I thought that's the most important thing. Clock is ticking. The fix is in. Bjorn never asked me for a drug test before. Easiest thing in the world to falsify it, lock me up, and throw away the keys. Or maybe I'm just being paranoid. Greetings! Did you find anything? Usually, this would have been a piece of gato, but the info on this plastic plate is restricted. What does that mean? It means that every man can get this cheese without a bit of running around the base for. <sighs> Not sure if you're familiar with the concept, but answering a question is supposed to answer the question. Get your answer then. There is no name associated with the license plate. How the fuck not? It was issued to the Los Angeles Police Department Metropolitan Division. The killer's a cop. Deductive reasoning would suggest it. Of course. Of course. The killer's a fucking cop. Of course. No, define. Get to him. Division. Yeah, hi. Um, I was supposed to contact one of your detectives about making a statement. Okay. I can't find his contact information anymore. I don't remember his name. A uh, statement about what? I'm a witness to a crime. Is this about a current open investigation? I don't know. I, I was just told to call. Well, you, you can come in and make a statement. We'll make sure it gets into the right hands. The guy told me to call him directly. He's younger, wears a tailored suit. Oh, I think I know who that is. Stan LeBeau, is that who you're talking about? Stan LeBeau. Yeah, I think that's him. I can't give you his contact information over the phone, but if you want to make an appointment for a statement. The sun set hours ago. I'm sitting by the window again looking at my neighbors across the street. Rosalie is cooking some elaborate meal and watching Schitt's Creek on her laptop. Max sits on the floor and mixes screwdrivers and puts together what looks like a huge puzzle. And I'm alone again with my thoughts. Stan LeBeau didn't take a lot of Googling to figure out Ronald LeBeau's his brother, which made all the sense in the world. And how shocked would you be to learn that Stan is one of those bad apples that ruins the reputation of our valiant boys in blue, but somehow never gets sorted out? Wrongful death, excessive force, cases settled for undisclosed amounts by L.A. County. Quite the busy beaver for someone so young. Killer cop coming after me. Not what I signed up for when I called 911 to report a murder. I shouldn't be surprised. After they arrested me, I thought it was just a misunderstanding. I explained Ryan's history of violence that Rachel had feared for her life. I had feared for my life too, so I took the knife and stuck it in his arm because he lunged at us. But they didn't believe me. Rachel had never filed a report against him, had never gone to the hospital. She was too afraid, too ashamed, of course. Society will find endless excuses for the behavior of men. And so Ryan, the aggressor, became Ryan, the victim. And I went to jail for the crime of protecting my sister. Killer cop coming after me. Strangely, I'm not even that freaked out now that I know what I'm up against. One thing is more clear to me than ever before. I need to bring him down. But without a body, without even a name, no one would ever believe there's a victim. Killer cop against felon chick. Society will believe the killer cop every time. So tonight, I'm on a mission. Break into Roger's apartment and look for evidence. 
Hilton checked property records and hacked into the landlord's leasing agreements, but there isn't even a single mention of apartment 34 on any paperwork. Like the apartment itself doesn't exist. I need to wait until everyone across the street has gone to sleep so I minimize the risk of spreading COVID. Mask up, go over there, break in, and try to find any evidence I can about Roger's identity or that something violent took place there. Hello? Hey, Saskia, how you doing? Could be better, honestly. We got your results back. You tested positive for amphetamines. <laughs> of course I did. This puts you in violation of your probation agreement. You're locking me up. Because you're positive for COVID-19, you will be kept isolated from the general population for the remainder of your quarantine. When? <sighs> you're to report to the LAPD Metropolitan Detention Center tomorrow at noon. Failure to do so will result in a warrant for your arrest. You never called me on this number during the entire lockdown. We always did Zoom. What does that have to do with anything? Why did you call me on this phone? I just needed to get a hold of you quickly. You text me and then we hop on a Zoom. It's because Stan LeBeau can hear this. Excuse me? Stan LeBeau told you to give me this test, falsify it, and now put me in jail. What are you talking about? I don't know what you saw before when you looked at yourself in the mirror, but I hope what you see now is a coward. Because that's what you are. That's what you both are. Killer cop got to me before I got to him. I should have stopped. How stupid am I? All because of some old fart and some shithole I spied on like a creep? Who cares? <sighs> I care. I keep thinking had I gotten up just 10 seconds later that morning, I wouldn't have seen the murder. None of this would have happened, no one would have known. I would be free to deliver pizzas happily ever after. But that's the point. No one would have known. I need people to know. Because in the dark corners, if no one is looking, injustice spreads like black mold. Maybe there's still time to scrape the mold away. I have one day before I need to turn myself in and still have one ace up my sleeve. New guy. The other cop who showed up at the apartment and lost his mind when Roger wasn't there? I have his number, I can call him on my burner. He was so upset, got into a huge fight with Stan. He must be willing to listen to a witness who can tell him about Roger's disappearance. Yeah. Uh, hello? hello? Who is this? But right away I can feel the wall up. M my name is Saskia Butler, I hope I'm not calling at a bad time. Who are you? The thin blue line, can't fucking cross it. I saw you in the apartment when you came to visit the old man. What are you talking about? What did I expect? A red carpet? Two days ago, you came to visit a man at 236 South Holler, correct? But I have to try to get him to listen to me. Yeah, Orrin. Yeah, how do you know? Who are you again? Orrin? Is that the man's name? I'm a neighbor. I have information on his disappearance. What, what kind of information? He was murdered. I have his attention. Who? Finally. What did you say? I saw Stan LeBeau murder Orrin. Orrin was murdered? By Stan LeBeau. You know him, right? I saw you two talk. Stan has nothing to do with this. I'm losing him. I can't lose him. Please, listen to me. I'm telling the truth. I'm begging you to listen. No, no. If I lose him, I'm going back to jail. Tuesday morning, I saw Stan LeBeau kill Oren in the apartment at 236 South Holler. Wait. Now, now Stan is trying to put me away because I'm the only witness to his crime. I still have Rachel CC. I can always postmates a last meal. How did you get this number? Lobster roll? This is I, I'm telling the truth. Please, please listen to me. Something expensive and extravagant? I, I need your name. Hey Siri, text Stan LeBeau. What do you want to say? 8 a.m. Wilshire in Vermont. Come alone. Your message to Stan says 8 a.m. Wilshire at Vermont. Come alone. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, it's sent. I'm packing a bag. My car is parked right in front of the building. There's a good chance I can get to it without seeing anyone in the hallway or street. I don't want to risk infecting anyone, but I have no choice but to leave my apartment. I have Bjorn, Ronald, Stan, and his partner all coming after me now. The good news is I have something on Stan, and a last-ditch plan to keep me out of jail and get justice for Orin. It's all thanks to Hilton. Greetings. Salutations, my dark lord. Are you calling to bid me farewell? What are you talking about? I'm going to jail. They won. Stroll down memory lane with me to when I almost got fired from the restaurant because the sous chef thought I swept a plate of chicken nervous on the floor. What? After service, you went to him and told him it was you, even though it wasn't. You saved my job. What about it? Why did you do it? I don't know. 
Maybe because you could sense at the moment that at some point in the future I could repay you the favor. Or maybe I was just a decent human being and knew for a fact it wasn't you? Same thing. No, it's not. Wait, are you trying to say something nice to me right now? I'm trying to say I found something. Hey Siri, read new message from Stan LeBeau. Stan sent a new message. You're out of your league. Would you like to reply? Yes. What do you want to say? Check your email. Behold Stan's public Facebook profile. Family man, loves his son and daughter, goes fishing on the weekends, all with a light seasoning of MACA. Ever heard of the Metro Firing Squad? No. Taste your eyes. A private Facebook group Hilton has infiltrated. About 10 detectives and high-ranking officers from the Metropolitan Division posting racist and misogynistic memes, celebrating police shootings. Two years ago, they posted this video of Stan and a few others at a bar. A grand jury had dropped all charges against him in the shooting of a Latino suspect. Stan had claimed that the man had come at him when there was security cam footage showing the man running away. And here he was bragging that he executed the man so he could have sex with his girlfriend. And they posted this on social media. The fucking nerve. I found an article in the LA Times from 1997 about the Metro Fireman Squad. That's how far back they go. The piece says it's a gang within the precinct. They have initiation rights, matching tattoos, no women allowed, no black people allowed. Hilton took dozens of screenshots and ripped the video so we had a copy of it. The reporter who wrote the article in the 90s was now a KTLA anchor. We sent him the screenshots, but the video was our real leverage over Stan. You know what this means, right? They're gonna launch a blitzkrieg. Like a wise man once said, Oh. Why are you doing this? I launched this war. I already waved the white flag. It's not your battle to fight. You're a decent human being. Hard to come by. Stan sent a new message. Fuck you. You're dead. Would you like to reply? In my car now. My parents skipped town at the beginning of the pandemic, so I'm staying at their house overnight. We emailed Stan the screenshots. When we checked an hour later, the group had been deleted from Facebook, so we let him know we had a copy of the video. The plan is to meet him in a public place. I'll be in my car talking to him on the phone. I'm going to tell him I'll delete my copy of the video if he clears my name and stops my incarceration. I'll also try to get him to confess to the murder and record it. With the recording and all the evidence we have, I'll go to a lawyer and put an end to this entire charade. I'm checking constantly to see if someone's following me. Coast is clear so far. I need to call Rachel on the burner. I need to keep her safe. The way things are between us, she won't want to listen, but I need her to spend the night somewhere other than her own place. Only 12 more hours and this nightmare will be over. Hello? How's it hanging? It's not hanging, it's flying high. Oh yeah? Where are you? Staging a house in the valley. Oh, good, good. You're gonna be there for a while? Yeah, I was going to call you. I didn't mean to be such a buddy-duddy the other day. I don't even know what that is, but you have nothing to apologize for. I was the asshole. You live in a pressure cooker. All I ever want to do is open the steam release, not squeeze it shut even tighter. Hey, diamonds are formed under pressure, right? Exactly right. But you don't need that kind of forcing around that you were doing before. I'm, I'm glad you're leaving that be. Oh, looks like my client's arrived. I have to skedaddle. Rachel, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to not stay at your house tonight. What? It's not safe. What are you? <laughs> Rachel! Rachel, what's going on? Saskia. Who is this? You know who it is. You fucker! Leave my sister alone! Leave her fucking be! You've been 